You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. <laughs> The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's This Is How I Made It After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's This Is How I Made It After Show. Bingus for doing, and we're doing another After Buzz show for MTV's This Is How I Made It, episodes 8 and 9, so it's a little double trouble. My name is Thomas, and across from me... Kendra Cavasel. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you, Miss Kendra. <laughs> and you. to bring in the New Year, we have a special guest, Mr. Eric Chavaria. Hello, hello. He is an actor on Eastbound and Down. Thank you for joining us, Eric. Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I had nothing to do this Sunday, so... <laughs> oh, thank you. Perfect. I know. I don't know. Is that a compliment? <laughs> yeah, it is a compliment, because I actually... No, I, I was invited to... Five different parties, and um, I canceled them. Oh, oh yeah. It's always a party here at right. After Buzz TV, right? So. Right. Thank you for I'm being popping here. the peas, by the way. I don't know if you guys <laughs> noticed that. But so today, you know, so we're gonna we're gonna do a little double <laughs> trouble today. We're gonna uh, talk about Miguel, artist Miguel uh, Pimentel, and Miss Carly Ray Jepsen. This is crazy. You got it? <laughs> well, okay. And then we're going to, you know, later on we're going to touch on uh, Wiz Khalifa and Jamie Lynn Siegler. But let's go back to uh, Miss Carly Rae Jepsen. Um, you know, what are you, you know, she's from Canada. You're also from, from Canada. from my country, yes. Yeah, what are your thoughts on her? I'm, I'm happy for her. I, uh, I actually, I think I was telling you I saw a uh, true Hollywood story on her. And um, it's just kind of that quintessential, quintessential um, story of, you know, kind of... Uh, someone in obscurity and, and then just kind of an overnight success, but she, she had paid her dues, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was nice. Yeah, she did. She um, she mentioned, like, she she grew up in, like, a little town called Mission, uh, Mission British, British Columbia. Columbia. Mm -hmm. It was very rural, like an hour from Vancouver. She went to Vancouver and was singing and, you know, working odd jobs to kind of, you know, she was trying to pay the bills and also pursue her dream. And then one day she was in the bathtub and there was American Idol Canada. Canadian Idol. Or Canadian Idol, excuse me. We don't need oh. the American part. Oh, the no. Canadian oh. corrected. <laughs> oh, Sassy. <God>. Hey. <laughs> I'm just defending so, my people. <laughs> such attitudes up there. I know, right? Let's see. Yeah. But so, uh, so you know, it was the best decision of her life. Like uh, Ms. Jepsen, she, Carly Rae, she almost didn't go out there, and she decided yeah. to go audition, and you know, she did really well. And she, I think she placed third, is what she placed. Yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, and then and she started her career and started collaborating. And you know, the song that got her, the song that really, really rose her to the top was, you know, this is this is crazy. Well, what was it called? Here's Call my me number. Maybe. Call me maybe. Here's my number. Yeah. <laughs> All of the above. <laughs> well, and you know, she talked about too, which really interesting. Um, she, her sister said she was freaking out that Justin Bieber had retweeted her song. Yeah. And, and then, you know, obviously everyone's seen her song online, watched YouTube, and there's been so many parodies of that song. There's been like, is it, I think like a, a baseball player group or something? Mm -hmm. And then, you know, obviously Justin Bieber and his girlfriend and, you know, it's just... And other celebrities, they jumped on it, yeah. And it was such a simple song, but it really made her that big, and it was just kind of like a good, fun-loving summer song, right? Mm -hmm. And it's cool because uh, I think Justin Bieber was home, like visiting home, and he heard the, the song on the radio radio, which, because in Canada we have to play, I think it's 70% Canadian content, mm -hmm. so it was nice that she, she, she had already kind of broken that kind of, you know, that barrier? Yes, I can't even speak <laughs> today. <laughs> Thank you. Um, and then, you know, for him, the timing, for him to hear it on the radio and then to retweet it and the rest is history. Yeah, it is, and, and then he signed her to, he, you know, asked her to sign to his his new record album, that his new record label that he was, um, you know, putting together, mm -hmm. and she went ahead, and I mean, she's really, I'm really impressed with her. Yeah. I feel like someone, did my, am I imagining this, or did she say she doesn't really like the song anymore, or she's over oh. it, or? Did she I, that? I haven't heard that at all. Oh, wait, I don't know. And I follow her every day. <laughs> Do you really? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I follow her on Twitter. Like, literally? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, that's probably not a good idea. <laughs> right. I know where she lives, actually. In Canada or yeah. here? Yeah, in here. Oh, okay. So do you remember where you were the first time Breaking you heard her song? 
I probably was home. I actually, you know what? I hadn't seen the video, but everyone was talking about it. And I, I was like, fine, I'll go on YouTube. And then there's this whole mess about like all these people singing her song <laughs> and having all these versions of it. And I thought, good for her. Maybe I'll sing one day, make a video, and Justin Bieber will find it. <laughs> so I just felt really hopeful for myself. But does lightning <laughs> strike twice? <laughs> maybe. Why not? <laughs> but it's different places. Oh, well, well, well she's and Canadian. Maybe it'll be a different Justin Bieber. Because I think didn't. Well, Usher discovered him that way on YouTube, right? Mm -hmm. Oh Usher wow! Discovered Bieber, so he's kind of paying it forward. Okay, I think. forward. Yeah. Oh, good oh, for him. Go oh, Kendra. Trivia. A little trivia. <laughs> well, and kind of tell us. So, like, she's Canadian. She's broken into this market. You're originally from Guatemala. Kind Guatemala. Of explain, yes. Explain your story. Mm -hmm. Well, Justin Bieber saw me acting, <laughs> and um, on YouTube. On YouTube, yeah. And he was like, "We we have to sign this guy." No. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he retweeted your scene. He did. <laughs> no, I feel like I'm, you know, trying to make it. Like, I don't feel that I've accomplished a lot, even though, you know, it, like some people will come up to me and say, hey, you know, like they admire my work and whatnot. But um, I moved here in 95 uh, and I spoke no English and I'm still learning. So That's hopefully good. people well, will understand what I'm saying. If not, mm -hmm. we can have subtitles. <laughs> Um, but uh, yeah, and then I moved to Maryland, and that's where I went to college for theater, and I've done all kinds of stuff while, you know, trying to make a living. And once I realized that you cannot make a living doing theater, I moved to L.A., and now I'm a millionaire. Wow. Yeah, and you and literally were almost not quite rags to riches, <laughs> but you worked at a pizza restaurant. I was I was I have, yes. Uh, that was my first job. It's called Lido's Pizza in Laurel, Maryland. Oh, okay. And uh, I worked at, I worked at like every restaurant. McDonald's, Wendy's, you name it. Mm -hmm. uh, was, how far from like Baltimore is that? That is about 15 minutes from Baltimore. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's very close. And I lived in Baltimore as well. So. Oh, okay. And then what, what made you realize, like, did you come to the U.S. because you wanted to pursue acting? It's a larger market? Or was this, like, what, what made you come to the U.S. first of all? First of all, I think I just wanted to get out of the house. <laughs> uh, I wanted to get out of my, you know, my my dad's and stepmother's house um not because like they were beating me up or anything like that i just you know you know when you're a teenager and you're like oh like i want to conquer the world and so i felt i could do everything and anything so i came here that was the reason then i found acting and here i am mm -hmm. awesome so then so you did that and then so acting was it something that you wanted to do at a very young age or was it i did yeah but you know what i never asked my dad because i was like afraid of asking Mm -hmm. I might get like beat up for asking such a stupid question because <laughs> it wasn't a, like a typical profession like exactly. banking or and there's like no there's like no there is acting back home but um, there is no actual business like I don't know anybody that makes a living as an actor mm. so if you want to be an actor you move to Mexico mm -hmm. you move to the US you move to um, Colombia Spain was there was there like kind of a tight circle of people who shared your sentiments or you know were there people other kids saying oh I want to be an actor or no, was it just kind of I never upon? told anybody really oh, wow. <laughs> so wait so this was a, this was a, this is very interesting so the, yeah. this was like a burning desire you had as a kid and you yes. kept it Exactly. So when you moved to, what did you tell your parents you were going to do when you moved to the states? I was um I, my major was going to be um international business. And that's what I started doing. I mm -hmm. took, like, all these accounting classes, and then I was like, well, I'm by myself right now, so I can do whatever I want. So mm -hmm. I switched my, I changed my major. Oh. Awesome. I did theater. Yay. <laughs> now I'm poor. Yes. Well, and you said you, you don't feel that you've, re you've made it yet. What is your definition of success or success, making it? Success? Oh, ah, wow, that's tough. I feel like I... I would like to do a lot of like, once I've done a lot of films and a lot of TV and a lot of theater, I think that that's when I'll be finally be like, okay, so I've gotten somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I want to like, it's, it's not about money or fame at all. Like, I just want to prove myself that I can do all of these things. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, once I have, uh, um, once I have like, let's say five movies that I've done, you know, yeah. with like a nice part, um, I can be like, okay, so I've done movies. Yeah. You know? But like with Eastbound and Down, did you feel like you've at least kind of reached a certain echelon? Like, do you feel, okay, yeah. well, I've accomplished, you know, it, part it, of my goal? Absolutely, yeah. I feel like it's a, it's a, it's been a good um, stepping stone. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's a great show and I love it and it's mm -hmm. amazing. Um, but you know, I feel like that's the the first kind of like the first break that yeah. I get, um, and I really hope that there's a lot more to come. You know. Mm -hmm.
How did you get on Eastbound and Down, by the way? Since we're like, what made you audition for it, or did they say, hey, you're right for the part? Or what? Uh, I actually auditioned. Uh, my manager sent me, and I was very angry with them. I didn't want to go. I was like, really? uh, because they, the, um, audi my character was not supposed to have any lines um, for the uh, for the first episode. Mm -hmm. So they sent me a paragraph that they just wrote, and they're like, these are your lines, and there's like, it's five sentences on a on a piece of paper. That's all there is. So there's no character. Mm -hmm. I know nothing about anything, right? So I I call my agent like at 11:30. My audition was at 12, and I was like, I'm not going to this. And he's like, No, why? Why are you? Um, I was like, I, I have no idea what this is. This makes no sense. Why would I go and waste my time and waste their time? Mm -hmm. And I went in, and they had me improvise a lot. At that point, did you know it was for Eastbound and Down? or did I did you? know that, yeah. Okay. But I didn't know, like, there was nothing to go on. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, as an actor, you get your, you get your scene, you prepare, mm -hmm. you learn your lines, and then you feel confident. But when you don't know anything, you don't, I feel really, like, lost mm -hmm. and just uncomfortable. So you didn't want to mess up Exactly. I, I don't want this casting office thinking that I'm, you know, like... Like, I, I don't take like acting prepared, seriously. Yeah. yeah. But they had me improvise a lot. And um, we just went on and on. And then I didn't hear for, like, a month. I didn't hear anything. And then uh, on a Thursday night, I was working at the restaurant. I was still uh, at a restaurant. And um, they called me at 6, and they said, can you, on a Friday night, they said, can you go to Puerto Rico tomorrow and to start shooting next week? And I was like, yeah. Absolutely. Wow. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and that's a nice location to have your first shoot. Oh, my God. I was in love with Puerto Rico. Yeah. <laughs> that was your first time? That was my first time. Oh, wow. And it's paradise. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Well, and then, you know, like, kind of, so how does it make you feel? Like, you know, obviously you've had to struggle, and then, like, you know, our next artist is, you know, um, <laughs> going blank right now, but Miguel. Miguel actually grew up here in L.A., you know, and he talked about his struggles, but he didn't necessarily, you know, have to, he didn't have to venture out as far as you did mm -hmm. to, to seek a career. Mm -hmm. Like, he grew up in the city, he grew up in San Pedro, which is, like, southern part of Los Angeles. Um, you know, and, you know, his parents were all very supportive of him, which is the opposite of what you had. Like, his dad, you know, they didn't have a lot of money, but his dad would buy him a drum set, you know, mm -hmm. with, like, two drums, and mm -hmm. it was missing pieces. But, you know, there was always love, and he encouraged his son to pursue his, you know, his music career. Um, I don't know, how does that kind of resonate with you, that you've had to overcome those... You know, it's it's interesting because I feel like that uh, pushed me to do to do better mm -hmm. for some reason. Mm -hmm. um, like I had, ugh, I had uncles and just about everybody around me, you know, tell me that I was just not making smart decisions. And they, I mean, they're right in a way. Like deciding to become an actor and deciding to make a living as an actor is not very smart. You know what I mean? Like I. I've been working, you know, I, I've been working since 2005, and I just, uh, like a year and a half ago, left my restaurant job. Mm. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Like in any other field, after seven years of doing it, you are successful and you're making money, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not in acting. So I feel like people telling me, no, you can't do it, kind of just pushed me and gave me this, like, well, I'll show you attitude, you know? Um, and I've had this, like, weird, like, faith that I'm, like, it's going to happen. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's not a dream. It's happening, and it will happen. Like, I will be making a living as an actor for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. And I don't, it might be, like, silly, stupid, whatever you want to call it. But, um, you know, that's how I feel, so. Well, that's, I think when you have that sort of that feeling, you just know. Do you hear from your family, the, the, the uncles and aunts that kind of? Were naysayers at the time? You know what's funny? They all live back home. They're not in the U.S. So I only have one uncle who lives in the U.S. in Maryland. He's the only one who knows. So everybody, when I go home to visit my grandparents, like, nobody even, re like, I don't think they capture what it is that oh, I do. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I tell my grandparents, hey, I did this, I was in, you know, a movie with Matt Damon, they're like, oh, good for you, that's great. But wait, <laughs> so they don't see any of that there? No, they don't. Really? Yeah, I mean, they, they not just, uh, they could see it, like, my, my grandparents. Yeah. They don't even watch TV at all. Oh, okay. When the program so, is different, because it's, exactly. you know, it's well, Central America. And but, you, like, movie with Matt Damon, you, they have theaters. Yeah, right? they have theaters, okay. yeah. But uh, my grandparents live in a village, um, like, okay. really, like, far away from uh, the city. There's okay. no movie theater. I don't think they've ever been to a movie theater. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> but you grew up in, in the capital, correct? I grew up, no, I grew up in the village. In the village? I, yeah. Okay. Oh. I, I milled cows, and I grew, I walked barefoot for a long time. Mm -hmm. um, you know, my grandparents had pigs and turkeys and ducks and 
So, so it's a, I mean, it's a farm, you know? So living here is definitely a big change, like Los Angeles <laughs> compared, you know? Yeah, it's a, it's a big change. Have they ever gone to visit you, like, your, you know, your parents, or? Yeah, my mom was here last year. She stayed for a month. I bet they're, I mean, I bet they're really proud of you now. Yeah. I mean, have they, how, how, how have they expressed that to you now? You know, my, my mom's always been proud. Like, she's always been like, yeah, you can do it. Um, I, she's been like the only one in my family that's been like that. Okay. Um, I don't think anybody else, like, honestly, like, my grandparents, I don't think they even realize what it is. Mm -hmm. Because when I tell them, they go, well, we've never seen you in, like, a soap or anything like that. So, yeah. because yeah. that's all, they, they watch Mexican the novellas. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. Now I'm like, God, Grandma, I'm not good looking enough for that. Oh, Stop making God. me feel bad. Stop it. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, speaking of, you know, there is a cultural difference when you moved here. Um, you know, <laughs> one, <laughs> one, uh -oh. I can't stop laughing. One, one of Miguel's, uh, you know, biggest songs was Adorn. I don't know if a person can play that. <laughs> um, but, yeah, I mean, I, are, are you an, a fan of Miguel? Because like, you, 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 um, you were screening with us earlier and watching the mm -hmm. show, and um, you had said, oh, you know, some of these songs do sound familiar. Is this something that you've listened to before? Or? I didn't see that part. Okay. Remember, I came in a little late, so you I did. I, yeah, you did. <laughs> but but have you ever? Um, well, when she pulls it up, but if um, what kind of what type of music do you like to listen to? Um, you know, I don't have like favorite artists. To be honest with you, I listen to the radio, Pandora, mm -hmm. and just whatever comes. I don't like like I don't know. I don't have like specific things it, to listen to. Do you listen to music to kind of get yourself ready for your roles or for your I auditions? I don't. Or? If it's something like crazy, yeah, like if I have to be like, um, I had to play a psychotic person, I had to audition for a, a, that role, and I did have like like rock music, like yeah. hard rock, so to get me all like, you know, yeah, yeah. and I was like, that helped me, but not usually. Oh, okay. Yeah. This wouldn't... No, this is that's kind of like suit it, suit <laughs> I did down for like this a, would get me to the mood for something else. I think. Yeah, or to bring you back from being psychotic. An after buzz exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so this is this is adorned by Miguel, and like, yeah, I mean that is really interesting to think about. Like, you know, you have had to overcome a lot that uh, the, you know that other artists haven't. Like, you know, Carly Rae Jepsen is originally from Canada, and you came here from Guatemala. So definitely, you know, that's something that you, you actually had to move to another country. You know, you went to college, and then you mm -hmm. you know moved across country again. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, just everything, just, you know, that, that says a lot about you in pursuing your career. You know, and what, what's inter very interesting that you said, you know, and a lot of our um, artists said today, and they've said in the past, is they just they just kept pursuing it. They didn't let people tell them no, and it, mm -hmm. it's kind of that, that thinking that you brought up, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think, you know, like, I think that it's about hard work. Like, anything that you want to accomplish, it boils down to that. I have, you know, I've gone to school with a lot of actors, and I know a lot of actors. Um, and like the ones that put in the work, the ones that are out there every day and still wanting to do it, mm -hmm. you know, those are the ones that make it. Mm -hmm. uh, people who want to like get lucky and get like their chance to make it big or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed more and more. I've, I've been in LA for five years, and I've already like seen several people go back, like just move back to their state, you know, really? because they're like, ah, this sucks. And I think that there's a mentality out there that. You because somebody told you that you're good looking in high school or that you're talented, that that's all it takes. And it's like once you're here, you realize everyone is talented. Everyone's you know what I mean? Good looking. Everyone's good looking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's actually good to not be like um, good looking, like in the normal sense of mm -hmm. the word, to be a little different because you stand out. Mm -hmm. You know, like if it's a beautiful girl, you know, a five, eight beautiful girl with a perfect body. I mean, like, there's, like, a hundred sitting in, in the waiting room. So mm -hmm. just the ones that are talented and the ones that just keep pushing, you know? Oh, go through. That's mm -hmm. like um, Miguel said, life is going to fi uh, filter you out. If you don't, if if you, you don't do if what you, you do like, it, right. it, it will Absolutely. filter you out. Yeah, yeah. that's great. I, like, I, like I love that. that. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Um, hey, be sure and download us on iTunes and, and be sure and rate us. We love to get rated. We love the max amount of stars possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. if it was a segue, you can go ahead. <laughs> Speaking of segues, <laughs> on our next episode, <laughs> no, we're going to go into Wiz Khalifa and Jamie Lynn Siegler. Um, let's go into Jamie Lynn, you know, because yeah. it kind of just fell in her lap. Like, I love, I love her. She's great. You know, mm -hmm. she did a great job, you know, playing Tony Soprano's daughter in The Sopranos. But, you know, she had mentioned, like, you know, she always wanted to do that. She wanted to be blonde and a cowgirl at a young age. Mm -hmm. And it was second grade. She decided, like, hey, I want to get into singing. And so she started singing. But then she got too tall. Mm -hmm. 
and right. so she wasn't allowed to, you know, she wasn't allowed to sing, you know, any plays anymore. And, you know, it broke her heart, and she got out of it, and then she decided, like, hey, you know, like, um, I'm going to go ahead and, you know, try this acting thing one more time. Mm -hmm. I did forget that she, how did she pronounce it with a Long Island accent? The, the oh, dumb the dogs? Dumb or? dog, <laughs> right? With my Canadian the dumb American dog. That sounds accent. really sexy, Kendra. <laughs> <laughs> she is from Montreal. Dumb we know. <laughs> we know about the stats on Montreal women, right? <laughs> yeah, apparently Montreal is full of very beautiful women. Nigel's not even here to back it up. No, he's not. But so anyway, so, so back to. <laughs> so back to Jamie. Um, but she, yeah, I mean, she definitely, you know, she she went to the audition for the Sopranos. She went to sing. And she said, oh, great, that went well, I blew it, because they, the, they didn't want her to sing, they wanted her to act. She left, they called her, they wanted her to, to play the part. What I'm thinking is, it, she kind of alluded to, but I guess she fit what they wanted her to look like in the part. What do you guys think? I almost thought also maybe her attitude in saying, like, oh, you don't want me to sing, and then I, I don't know if she had an attitude. It just sounded mm -hmm. like maybe she was kind of... You know. Like what they wanted for the role, like kind of yeah, like a like tough, a tough girl. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I, that, I, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, mm -hmm. but I mean, she didn't tell us exactly what she said, but right. But uh, she does make it sound like it was easy for her. I don't know if that's yeah. a case, you know. But it, she does, and so I think that for some people it is, you know. For but I feel like those are very far few, like between like thousands of 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 people, you know. Like I've I, I know people that work all the time um, acting, mm -hmm. like they're like. You might see them like in six different shows in one year, you know, like four episodes here, five episodes there. And I bet you they go like out in public. No, no one knows who they are. Mm -hmm. um, but these are like these are the working actors. You know how the people talk about working actors and, and character stars, actors, character right? actors. Yeah. Well, there are um, like famous actors. I feel like there's very few, mm -hmm. but um, uh, working actors, you know, that's that's like the the ones that are working. Mm -hmm. Then there's like a billion that are trying to do it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but um, she did make it sound like it was easy. I don't know. I mean, I have never seen a person that, you know, that gets that many amazing jobs. And, I mean, and good for her. You and know? your expression in there, because when she had mentioned, when Jamie mentioned she got home, <laughs> oh, you don't mind if I bring this up, but she mentioned when she got home, they got the phone call to go back, yeah. and she got the part after yeah, she auditioned the second time. Her mom was ecstatic. She didn't know what to think. She's like, it happened that fast. And you were just, you even said, wow, that that doesn't always happen that way. Right. And, you know, you touched on it earlier, but, like, I think that's a very interesting point, because this show is very uplifting, and it, and it tells people, hey, you need to, if you have a dream, pursue it. And I think you are you. That's what we want you on the show today because you're you're a living example of yeah. I have this dream. I'm going to pursue it, but I had to work very hard to get here. And and you said you know it's not been easy, right? Yeah, it's been it's crazy. Like it's very hard. But like what I imagine is well, would could, would I be happy working a nine to five job and making a decent living, or mm -hmm. would I be happier here? Even though like I don't know where my next paycheck's coming from. And life is a little crazy. I, I prefer this, you know. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, like, what, what was the question about the not? Yeah, just kind of your thoughts on like how you've had. You actually, you know, you 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 talk about the struggle in the day to day process to actually to actually make it, and you know, in the process of getting to, you know, to grow in your career and getting to where you ultimately want to be. Right. I think that yeah. I think that it comes down to like yeah, like I said, you know, like um, training and like I've been in, in, in acting class, you know, like since 2001 mm -hmm. like I, I don't think i've ever been like six months out of an acting class yeah. <laughs> because there's always something new to learn yeah and moving from theater to tv there's like a huge like you have to like tone it down you know i'm i'm actually curious about your theater work did you mm -hmm. ever kind of think about going to new york and pursuing a broadway career or something like that i did but um a lot of people around me dissuaded me because there aren't that many, you know, I still have an accent. I mean, there are very few roles for Hispanic people. Mm -hmm. I mean, anywhere in show business, if you really think about it. But um, especially in New York. And, you know, may, I have um, like 10 people that I went to school with moved to New York. Mm -hmm. And they're still there and they work all the time. They're doing off-off-Broadway or mm -hmm. off-Broadway theater. And they're not, you know, they're not necessarily making a living. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Yeah. Well, I'm going to take it to the next level. <laughs> I, I think part, I know what you're going to do. Yeah. In terms Ooh. of creating opportunities for yourself, mm -hmm. do you ever think about writing or creating or producing your own work that you could star in? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm actually, what? we're about to start with a friend of mine. We're about to start writing a pilot. Oh, okay. Yeah. Huh? Um, and I've written breaking stuff news. before. <laughs> yeah, breaking news. <laughs> 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 TV exclusive. Cue it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Marissa.
Sorry, as you but were. I, I think that that's where, you know, like a lot of, if you really do your research, you find out that a lot of people who star in the shows, like girls, for example, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like she, she wasn't sitting around waiting for somebody to be like, hey, star in the show. Like she had to make it happen. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And, mm -hmm. uh, and Which one? Grey's Anatomy. Grey's Anatomy. Mm hmm. Uh, oh, I can't think of the name of that, but I know what you're talking about. Yes. Yeah, you, you have to. Chandra, Chandra Wilson. Yes, yes. Thank you, Chandra oh. Wilson's yeah. private practice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she wasn't sitting around waiting so, for people. Exactly. Yeah. You seize the moment is basically what you're advising. Yeah, and you do as much as you can, like whatever you can do. Just you know what I mean, like and and it's not about like people. A lot of people say it's about being at the right place at the right time. I feel like it's about working towards what you want to do and just focusing your energy towards that. Mm -hmm. And it, it eventually, yeah, like it, there's no other option. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Well, that's kind of what was Khalifa brought up. You know, he said, <laughs> no, he brought, he did. He said, like, hey, you know, I was going to have, like, the normal kid's life where I was going to work, and I'm going to work, and mm -hmm. I'm going to pursue, you know, this rapping career that I want to start. And his mm -hmm. dad said, you know, you can either, kind of like your parents said, you need, you need to get your college education. He's, his dad said, get your college education or rap, and he ended up, you know, blowing up with rap well, before he... I think it's good when a parent does that and gives you a deadline because I think that kind of you're like, oh wait, I need to make this happen. He gave him two years. He mm -hmm. said if it, if it hasn't happened, you need to go to college. Yeah, and it kept and it kept going, and he just um, he was very realistic about it, and it and it was a very it was a more realistic approach than what we've heard in the past. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad that MTV decided to share that with all of us because it kind of does tell younger people like, hey, you know, you, like you had said, like acting at all expense, but you you definitely realize the consequences, and sometimes people don't realize if I pursue this producing career and music or television or acting th th there can be you know a, a definitely a difficult side to it mm -hmm. absolutely i know people who produce um you know and they're still like you know like not making a good living mm -hmm. you know what i mean and because they're like oh, I know. like everyone <laughs> <laughs> like everyone in this business it's kind of like um like are out there on their own you know mm -hmm. what i mean like mm -hmm. it's not like being an accountant you know where yeah. it's like you just sit down and or you find a job and you're set yeah. um so you kind of like have to be like uh, like you have to be like your own company mm -hmm. basically mm -hmm. and you have to do all of the you have to accomplish all that a company needs you have to do them yourself mm -hmm. so you know um are you always marketing yourself do you feel i do a little bit i not I'm not doing it as much as I used to. You have to get him more active on Twitter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah. So then be sure and tweet him. What, what is your Twitter handle? It's uh, Eric J. Chavaria. Be sure and tweet him. Let's let's blow up his Twitter. <laughs> yeah. So we can shut Twitter down. Like, Good luck like, spelling that. <laughs> it's on our Twitter, so you can pick it up from there. <laughs> yeah. Oh, can we can we play Wiz's? Uh, oh, we're on a first name basis now. Can we play Wiz's? There we go. Uh huh. If you want. We got black and yellow yeah, over here. Black and yellow. Yeah. <laughs> Someone over here is a uh, Pittsburgh proud. Yes. Steeler fan. Well, I have family in, in Pittsburgh. When he said, you know, that that's what he loved is being able to rep his hometown, Pittsburgh. Like he loved being able to like that he could just say black and yellow and everyone knew it was Pittsburgh mm -hmm. and you know is, is that something you hope that you know you could kind of like represent obviously you came from like a very a very small town but maybe just you know going back home like you can help bring more I would love that like my dream would be to like uh, to help build schools and just like educate like bring education more um, back home like just just to like just build schools and just mm -hmm. give people like um, allow them to go through like through high school college and do all of that. I feel like a lot of, uh, be, like being over there, for example, if you want to work at McDonald's, people will ask you for a college degree. Oh, really? The reason for that is not that they're being, you know, like asses or whatever. It's because there's so few jobs that they get so picky. Mm -hmm. So they want the best of the best. So That's if you want to serve fries at McDonald's, you know, they might want you to have a degree. Hmm. Which wow. is insane, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's one of my goals. Like, I've already written my Oscar um, speech when I oh, think, uh, <laughs> when I inspire the whole world to follow their dreams, and everybody does it. And have you done that? I have. That's and you great. think after Buzz TV? And I think after Buzz TV. <laughs> well, you have to add that yeah. little addendum. Thank you. Yeah, we we to signed that addendum today. <laughs> yeah, we'll be watching from. But home. You, you know, like I, it, anything else, like any other advice. I mean, because like that you would give anybody that we haven't touched mm. on that you kind of want to share. Like anybody that's trying to become an actor. Yeah, or it, anything, an actor? In, any acting or just anything just that would play in the music career or entertainment career or just trying. Yeah, like you said, trying to make it in general. Any any mm -hmm. advice that. I would say work hard, just go for it, you know, like, and this is the thing, if you 
if you're questioning it, you probably don't want it. You know what I mean? Like, I, and I know people have said this before. Like, if you think you can make a living some, doing something else, you should do that. I, you know, even though it's a cliche, it's completely true. Like, I know I could be, like, I could be selling houses. I could just go back to being a real estate agent. I would be making a lot more money than I am than I am right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But that's not what I want to do. So, like, you have to be willing to be broke like a college student, like, for the rest of your life. Like, if that's what it takes. Mm -hmm. And it sounds beautiful when you talk about it. It's like, oh, that's so great. <laughs> but believe me, it's not. When you're wondering if there's a check coming in the mail from your agent and it's already the 29th of the month, it doesn't sound as romantic. Well, that's what I, I kind of wonder. Do you have sort of a, a daily conscious, like a, a mantra or something that you tell yourself so that you don't get jaded or you don't give up? or You You know, what I, when I've gotten jaded, which it's, hap it's, it's happened, like I've felt like I've been doing it for 40 years and mm -hmm. I'm just like, ah, I don't want to do it anymore. Um, I usually take, take a class. Mm -hmm. um, just try to like try to look at the big picture. What am I doing? Because it's very easy to forget. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a lot of people will come here and get a bartending job or, or any job, and then just get like your life gets like sucked into that, and then you lose like your big picture. The side of it. Yeah. The side. Yeah. Do you ever? Um, you know, William Shatner was recently interviewed by CNN, and shockingly, he it's said. Country. He said he still gets nervous about being poor one day, and the man is wealthy beyond you know, most of our imagination. Is that something that you worry about, too? You mentioned, you know, you're always conscious, but is that something that, that's always in the back of your mind? Like, I, I have to get that next part, or I have to... Yes, but you know, you know how a lot of people work all the time? Actors are just working and working, and I think it's that fear. Because you don't know, like if you're going to get another job. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, you just finished, um, you know, this gig, and then it's like, well, you have zero now. So it's like, so every time you're starting from scratch. Mm -hmm. It's like, you just finish your, your job at whatever show for 10 weeks or whatever, and now you have, you're unemployed. Mm -hmm. So, yes, I totally agree with that, and I think that that's true. I mean, Robin Williams, I think, said that he always... He like every time he's working on a project, he thinks that this is the last project. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is, this is the last time. Well, it keeps you hungry, right? Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Or you get hungry. Uh, I knew you were going to go there. <laughs> I, just, I knew it. <laughs> no, because I, I remember it was it Meek Mill mm -hmm. who said it about Rick Ross. He was like, "Oh, this man made it, and he's still working. He's mm -hmm. a workaholic, and he's." And that's where I think it, it kind of the, the switch turned on for Meek Mill, saying, oh, okay, I have to keep working. I, I can't just make the money and relax and, you know, coast on that forever. Is there anything, that, like, in, in today's episode that you saw that you're like, oh, I wish I had done that, Eric, or, you know, or, hey, I'm glad I didn't do it this way, or is there... I really loved, uh, what's his name, the... Uh West Cal is it Wiz Khalifa? Khalifa. Wiz Khalifa, yeah. I love that he said he was 16 years old, and while all the kids are partying or doing whatever, he's in the studio, like, making music. I think that that's the mentality that will get you to success. Mm -hmm. You know, like, you're so inter— Like, first of all, you're doing it because you love it. If you're getting into something because you want to be famous, and that's your only reason, or because you want to be rich, you're really setting yourself up for failure because— that's the last thing that happens. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you have to learn, you have to prove yourself, like, a million times before somebody will go, like, okay, let's hire him. So, yeah, I, I think that that focus that he had, I, I find that, you know, amazing. And I, you know, like, I don't think, I, I mean, I feel like I, I have some of that. Like, everything that I do revolves around acting. Um, so I think that that's, I, I really love that, actually. It was really inspiring. What's your favorite part? Like, what would be your favorite part if you could just play any part? What would be your, your dream? I think I would like to start with uh, starting in a sitcom, in a comedy. Um, mm -hmm. Whether it's a sitcom like a multi-camera or uh, like a, one of those uh, awesome comedies on like HBO mm -hmm. or Showtime. I think that would be a, like a really like, I would like to see that. Like I think that it would help me like feel that I can do it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like mm -hmm. different genres. Exactly. Yeah. Do different and that I can carry something. Like, like, pe like that I'm like interesting enough as an actor that people will actually tune in because of me. Right. Is there, you know? is there a time where you've noticed like, you know, you know, being any span and down like, oh, I, I've made it or in the, at this point I've made it. I'm, I'm surprised I've made it this far. Is there, what, what was that moment you had? Mm. 
Um, I was, oh, I was, I mean, I was crying. First of all, I was like, ah, I was like in tears that, oh my God, because like there's as positive as you are, there is always this voice in the back of your mind that tells you that it's not going to happen. That it's just, you just being your 12 year old self with all these dreams. Mm-hmm. Um, but, um, um, I've, I felt, I mean, it's. I, I don't want to, you know, I don't want to say that that's like my big break because obviously, like, I've been in like four episodes, you know, but um, it definitely helps my confidence. Mm-hmm. Um, and um, um, yeah, I mean, it just helps. I just feel like just a little bit better about myself and that I'm growing, you know. That's awesome. And is the twelve-year-old voice being a little more quiet? The twelve-year-old boy. He. I think he is. The voice. Yeah. I think he is because. I'm just asking. Uh, no, it's yeah. good. Oh, you mean like about the negative voice or yeah, the positive? The little voice that tells you. Uh, you can't you, do it. I'm you trying. I'm it. working on killing that little bastard. Ooh, ouch. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> I didn't that expect note. that. Yeah. That. It's a negative <laughs> ass. <laughs> so you joined East Planet Down in season two, and you're on season three, and yeah. we're hearing that you know it was canceled, but we're hearing they're possibly going to be shooting in the future. For season four, anything you can share after Buzz exclusive or? Um, in this season, I will get married, and oh. um, uh, we're going to have twin babies, and um, I may or may not die. I'm kidding. No. Uh, <laughs> wow, I was like, this is good. <laughs> I know the listeners are like, uh-huh. <laughs> no, I, I have no idea. There is nothing that I know. They don't tell me absolutely anything. So. In fact, and sometimes, you know, that they give you the script the same day that you're shooting. I was gonna Which say, is you, when you audition, they exactly. hand-wrote they hand, hand it for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's only your scene or something, right? That's or only my scenes? scene. And, like, um, I actually got, like, into an argument with the, with the second AD um, because um, I was shooting, like, one in one day, we're shooting scenes from three different episodes. So I'm being, like, driven back, like, from set back to, to the trailer to change. And then back again. I chanced like I don't know, like five times uh-huh. that day. And I was like, "What the hell are we doing? Like, what what's happening? I have no idea. I forget which episode I'm shooting right now." And he was like, "Here are the scripts." So of course, of course, he gives me the scripts, and it's like I don't have, you know, like we're shooting right now. I don't have time yeah. to to read them. And um, but that's how it works. And sometimes they're they're writing things, like they're yeah. changing things. Mm-hmm. Like on the set. It was several episodes. Was it out of sequence you were shooting? Yeah, they shoot it like, like a film. So then... Wardrobe change, everything. So how yeah. did you kind of get to where you needed to be for each scene? If you... You know, like, you, you just do it. You got it last minute. You don't know where your headspace is supposed to be. How do you... I'm, I'm just, you just get in, you know, like, thankfully, I because I had been on the show the, the previous season, mm-hmm. I already know my character. So I usually I'm just in character the whole day, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, so whenever something comes, I just do it. And they, you know, they improvise a lot. Like, they allow us to improvise. Like, a, okay. a lot of the lines that you see, they're completely improvised. They were never on the script. Oh, I like that. You mentioned you watch a lot of improv- improvised shows. Is that, and that's, you know, that does play hand in hand with this then. Yeah. I love, yeah, I love improv. What's it like working with the crew? Because, you know, for we do, we do an After Buzz show for Eastbound and Down here, um, Kelly, myself, Miriam, and JC, and we've had Eric as a guest and Liz also. What's it like working with with Liz and with other people? I mean, you guys all seem to get along very well. Is it like a family? Because a lot of times sets can be that way. It's like a group of friends just having fun. It's 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 like a, I told Danny I was like this is you guys have ruined it because now you know my expectations are so high for every set that I work on because some sets you show up you do your scene and you say goodbye sometimes you don't share with anybody like mm. I did a scene for um, Man Up I don't know if you guys remember that show last it got canceled like after like thirteen uh, episodes but anyway I show up they I knew my scene. Uh, the director said, hi, my name is so-and-so. I'm the director. We did about four takes of the scene, and I was done. Really? You know, and, that, and that's how it usually works. Mm-hmm. Hmm. It's like, it's business. It's not, you know, let's all have fun. But with these bounces, we're all away, and we're all staying in hotels, so we get to, like, really get to know other people. Mm-hmm. And then we just get into fights, orgies. I mean, it's just insane. Yeah, we've heard. Another we've heard the after yeah. exclusive. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so many exclusives tonight. Well, I mean, no, I really thank you for being a guest on our show, Eric, and we wish you nothing but the best. Thank yeah, you so much. Luck. And yeah. thank you. I mean, you have re- a lot of inspiring words for everybody. Oh, thank you. And I'm, I'm really happy to be here. So, yeah. And I love your accent, Kendra. 
my which one though? That one. <laughs> oh, that one, not the not oh, the, the, the Long dog. Island one. <laughs> the dog dog. <laughs> no, thank you guys. It's it's so much fun. I love coming here, so. Yeah. Awesome. Well, you can find me on on Twitter. You can twidazzle me at Thomas Guide. T O M A S G U I D E. Mm-hmm. I'm Kend- at Kendra Cavasel. K E N D R A K A B A S E L E. And Mr. Chavaria. And it's Eric E R I C K J Chavaria C H A V A R R I A. Try and remember that. (laughs) That is very long. All right. Thanks again. I'll see you next time. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.